Jesus was anointed. Jesus was anointed. What is anointing? It's to be smeared, to be covered, to be completely covered with something. Now, when you got born again, the Holy Spirit came in you. But when you get born again, that Holy Spirit's in you. But when you get uh, baptized with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's like the difference in, I can drink some coconut oil, I can eat some coconut oil, but I can take some coconut oil and smear it all over my body, right? Or I can drink some water and it's on the inside of me. But if I take a shower, I take a bath, I get deluged with water. It's on the outside, it comes on me. Uh, many times people have kind of used this analogy that you take a glass of water, you pour some water in it, it's got water, right? It has some water, but you keep pouring it, keep pouring it, keep pouring it till it spills out and now it's baptized in water. It's all over him. And that's what God wants. He wants the spirit to be all over us. So Jesus was anointed with the spirit. He put on his God, his God suit, if you will, his God cloak, his God covering. And the power of the Holy Spirit was present on him to heal. He cast out devils. The power was moving through him, miracles, signs, and wonders after he was baptized in the Spirit. If you're born again, you can receive that same Spirit, that same power. Jesus couldn't do anything without it. Power-wise, you can't either, but it will turn you into a powerhouse. It's like putting on your Superman suit and you jump out of the booth and you're out there and you're doing mighty works of God. And people go, who is that? You go from being Clark Kent, mild-mannered, not able to do anything, maybe shy, maybe backward, maybe you can't speak or whatever, you know, education, and the Holy Spirit can come on you and all of a sudden you're a superpower, you're a superhero. You can do things that are beyond anything that you have ever con conceived of being able to do. Let's look at scripture today and let's see a better an understanding of the Holy Spirit uh, in, the, in the book of Acts and throughout the word of God, this anointing from God himself, this power from God. The Bible says in John 16, 12, that when Jesus was on the earth, before he was crucified, he wanted to tell his disciples many things. Do you remember? He said, there's many things I want to tell you, but he couldn't. There was a reason he couldn't tell them. They couldn't receive it yet. They'd not been born again. And the Bible says that things of God are foolish to the carnal mind, to the world worldly, fleshly mind. We look at the things of God and we think, that doesn't make any sense. And that's one of the reasons people get so kind of freaked out about speaking in tongues. It's not anything freaky. The Holy Spirit's not anything freaky. It is a personality of God. It is a person no different than Jesus, no different than Father God. Father God, you have a loving Father. You have a saving Son. He sent his saving Jesus. So you have a loving father. You have saving Jesus and you have the powerful Holy Spirit. And they're all three, the Godhead. All right. John 20, verse 21, Jesus came to the disciples after his resurrection and he finds them. Guess where he finds them? He finds them in a room and they're in the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear. So here Jesus comes back. He's been, he's been crucified, resurrected, ascended on high. And where does Jesus find his disciples? Doing what the church is doing today, hiding. They were hiding. They were afraid. They wouldn't speak up or do anything. They were just locked behind the door, hiding in the church, hiding wherever they were. Okay, they were in, they were in fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. They weren't even sure it was him till they saw his hands, they saw his side, and they realized this is the Lord. And so they were overjoyed. And Jesus said again to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. When he breathed on them, it's the same as when Adam and Eve were created and God breathed life in them and they were born, right? Now, Jesus breathes on them and they are born again. The power of God comes on the inside of them and they're born again. They become alive to God. And uh, the Holy Spirit, the life force of God is on them. He breathes on them and they're born again. Then in Acts 1, before Jesus left, before he left them, he told them, do not, uh, Acts 1, 4 and verse 5, he says, um, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. Everybody say the gift. Yes. Wait for the gift. Now we know they've already been born again. Jesus breathed on them. They received the Holy Spirit. But now Jesus is telling them, don't go out, don't leave Jerusalem, don't go out and do anything yet, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. 
For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that baptized Jesus in the River Jordan now is going to come on the disciples and they're going to go out and they're going to do mighty things for God. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a God covering when God puts his cloak on. Now let's see if something different happened to the disciples after they received the Holy Spirit. The promise of Acts 1 is, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Again, when you're born again, the breath of God comes on the inside of you. The Spirit comes in you. When you're baptized in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes on you and the power of God flows through you. We're called to a dark world. We're called to a world that's hurting, that's lost. They're looking for the supernatural. Look at all the television programs. They're all about supernatural things. The world is looking for the supernatural, but most of the time they're getting a counterfeit because the living church, the word, the power of God that lives in us is not being manifest in this world the way it's supposed to be. Let's look at Acts 2, verse 1 and 4 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, all the disciples were together in one place. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, many times we think of this little doves flowing, but that's not what the way this describes it. It describes it as this whole this violent wind. It's a sound. Think of a freight train, okay? Have you ever been in like a tornado or a cyclone or something? This violent sound, this wind, this power from heaven, a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house they were sitting in, filled the whole house. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. So you've got this incredible sound, this wind, this fire. It's not like Oh, a little kumbaya Holy Spirit, okay? This is a powerful force that rocks and shakes the whole house and shakes the world. It comes and it fills the disciples with this power, this glory from on high. This is something that we've not had pictured in Bible movies a lot of times, right? We get the wrong picture of the Holy Spirit. This is force. This is power. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled. How many of them were filled? All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to do what? Speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Who enabled them? Spirit. The Spirit enabled them. Powerful, incredible force came in that room and came on the inside of them. They received the same power that Jesus had. In Acts 2.38, the Bible says it's for everyone. Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Okay, that's the first step. Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus for forgiveness of sins. And, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who, far, who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. How many is the promise for? All. all. Let's everybody just say the promise is for me. Promise it's for you. All right, let's talk about some more in Acts 8, 4 through 7. The signs then appeared on the church, right? These signs appeared. The same works we saw Jesus doing after he got filled with the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, now we see the disciples doing. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. They saw the miraculous signs. They saw the same signs that they saw in the ministry of Jesus, right? These signs are happening. Demons are leaving. Cripples are walking. People are getting healed because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that signs and wonders are a key to evangelism? They saw and they listened to what the disciples had to say, right? Because they saw the works. They saw the signs. It made them want to listen. A sign will point point you to the direction. I trust this word today encouraged you. I want you to get more. The whole You Can series talks about you can be happy, you can think right, you can be healed, you can have all the things that you need in life to win. God's given them to us 
in Christ Jesus. The world, though, will try to steal those things. The enemy, the traditions of men, people that want to do things and hurt you in some way, try to extract things from you like your finances or whatever situations in this world. We need to be aware of what the enemy's trying to do. We need to recognize who we are in Christ, what we have in Him, and what we can do in Him. And I encourage you today, renew your mind with God's Word. It has completely, radically changed my life, my family's life, our children, our marriage. Everything has changed as a result of thinking God's thoughts. And so today I wanna to encourage you, you can think right, you can have the life that God promised. Uh, Colossians says, beware lest anyone deceive you uh, through empty traditions, through philosophy, through wrong beliefs. And so I encourage you to think right. Get the series you can. I encourage you, you can get an audio series and listen to it in your car and renew your mind that way. You can also get the DVD series and do a Bible study for yourself or for your family members or for your neighborhood, your Bible study group at church. Sure you can. You can live God's promises. You can live the life that Jesus paid for. So I encourage you today, get the series. Thanks for joining me today on Drenda. I just wanna pray with you today. Father, I thank you that you help my friend to think your thoughts, God. Help them to renew their mind with the Word of God and to change every circumstance, both in their life and those around them, to live the victorious life, Jesus, that you paid for. We thank you for that, God, in Jesus' name. If you've never called in the name of Jesus, that is the beginning to a life with God and thinking right. Thanks for joining me today. Go to drenda.com. There's resources like you can there. And uh, there's lots of other things that'll encourage you. I'd love for you to join me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, email me, let me know what you're thinking. God bless you. Have a great day and think God's thoughts today. Do you want to end the war on sadness? Then click the button right there and subscribe.